Hey everybody, it's Kimberly E. Shell and welcome to another episode of Talented Television. I'm so glad to have you here. Thank you to my Church Stars Network family who's either watching or listening to the podcast. Also to my viewers that have been following uh, for the last few years, thank you so much. I need you all to like, comment and share what you're seeing on talented television i'm trying to grow just more and more and i truly need your support so thank you in advance now listen let's do what we're here to do Campbell, and you're watching Talented Television with Kimberly. This gentleman that we have today is originally from Bogalusa, Louisiana, or he would say Louisiana. Now he's residing in Tacoma, Washington. He is a singer, songwriter, and producer, and he's so much more. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my friend, Mr. Navel Davis. Hey, Navel. Hi, Kimberly. How you doing? I'm great. How are you out there? Hey, I'm trying to keep warm. I mean, it was kind of cool today, but like 40 something degrees. Oh, it's cold in Washington. It's yes. cold there. Yes. I got some hot weather here. I'm going to send it your way, okay? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> hey, I can use that. Yes. Some of that indeed. good old vitamin D. <laughs> yes, yes. We need that. I'm telling you. I wanted to share your gifts today and talk about all the things that you've done with the talented television audience. So again, <laughs> thank you for joining me. So let's kind of so dive much. in. You were um, raised as a PK or pastor's kid, uh, to those of you who don't know. And I believe the church is where you kind of fell in love with music. So tell me, what are some of the sounds that drew you into you know, music? In fact, my dad, used to play a little guitar. He didn't play that much. But anyway, um, by him being the pastor of the church, he had a guitar player there. His name was D.C. Andrews. And he poured into my life. As a matter of fact, I used to sit on the front row and just gaze. You know, I probably sit on the front row as a kid, just be gazing like this, you know. Yes. And so I'm watching him, man, play. I said, oh, my goodness, he's really... Back then, I didn't say he's really good. So he used to see me just gazing at him. And so he came up to me one day and said, hey, you know what? You're going to be a guitar picker one day. Mm -hmm. And lo and behold, guess what? I think I got about, what, 10, 11, 12 guitars. Wow. <laughs> you, became, <laughs> you became just that, that guitar yes, picker, yes, huh? Yes, yes, yes. That's why I would tell folks, you have to be careful what you tell kids. You know what I'm saying? He, because he could have said something negative, but he said something positive. And so I'm glad he pulled into my life with that kind word and said, I'm going to be a guitar picker. Thank you, yes. Jesus. Thank you, mm -hmm. Jesus. And you are one of the best, definitely. So I know that you love the guitar and you said that uh, gentleman D.C. Andrews poured into your life. Um, are there any other instruments that you picked up since um, playing the guitar? Yes, yes. I used to want to play the drums. And so as a matter of fact, we used to go down the street sometime and we would get these big old cardboard boxes. And we would just take those cardboard boxes, just be going down the street, just, you know, just waiting away. Anyway, so I always wanted to play drums. And then as time went on, um, then I used to watch our organists at our church as well. I said, oh man, I would love to learn how to play keyboard as well, but guitar was always was my passion. But I picked, up the, I picked up the guitar, I picked up the organ. As a matter of fact, I was getting ready to uh, put on a program and uh, the organ player did not show up. And so I said, from then on, I said, you know what? I'm going to buy me a keyboard and I'm going to learn myself. There so you in go. other words, and we say down these I'm gonna learn myself. I know y'all said you're gonna teach yourself. I said I'm gonna learn myself <laughs> how to play the keyboard. And lo and behold, the Lord had blessed us to play these in the three chords, you know, one, two, three, I always say one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost, and we had some church. 
There you go. And you was ready to go on those three right. chords. Was ready to go. Yes, yes, indeed. So listen, you played in a popular band um, called the Deep South Band. Oh, so I, my goodness. <laughs> yes. I want to <laughs> know what it was like performing with the guys um, of the Deep South Band and also what one of your most memorable performances was with them. Well, they, well, like now we had quite a few bands before Deep South. As a matter of fact, it used to be a band called the Afros. Oh, popular back in the day too. Okay, that was so, a band that you were in. Yeah, well, I wasn't in that particular band, but then we was had our own band. We call ourselves the um, the the Groovatones or something like that. Oh, yeah, because oh. we had. Hey, as a matter of fact, we had men in that. <laughs> we kept on changing our <laughs> name. Deep South. Uh, came about after another group was called the Afros. And so what we did, we took some of the older guys because um, the Afros were the older group and Deep Function, we were really young. Mm. And so what had happened, the Afros had broken the function was still doing their thing. And so what they decided to do, they said, hey man, let's get some of these young cats and uh, put, them, you know, put them together with some of the older cats. And so what had happened, so we decided to change the name to Deep South. And that was back in 1977. That was a big moment in life. And so when we got the day, when Deep South came together, we were something like the uh, maze back in the day because we were the rhythm section group. All right, and, uh, all right. So like y'all were the maze of Louisiana at that time. Hey, really like we was, really like we was a legend in our hometown. And Lord has really blessed all of us. I mean, everybody was just pretty much gifted. Some of the guys, um, one of the guys, I think he was my age, when I said he had a photographic memory because there was certain songs that I couldn't do, uh, certain songs I couldn't play. And I would mm -hmm. go to him. I said, hey, man, can you teach me uh, this particular song? He said, sure. Because he would put on an album and he'd remember every word and every every note. Wow. And so, uh, yes, 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 yes. And so after then, of course, we practiced our craft. We got better as time went on lord bless us so uh we went on to do all the bigger things in life as a matter of fact we went on here and recorded back in the day too but during that particular time Steve wonder came to bobo Lusa, louisiana Stevie this small town you know in this small town come on Steve wonder coming to bobo Lusa, louisiana see that louisiana thing. Hollywood, Louisiana, you know, only, only time that we was really, <laughs> only time that we were really involved <laughs> with the big time when we went to the movies. Everybody wanted to be like the one that was on the big screen. And so anyway, for um, C1 to come to Bogalus, we thought that was really huge. Of course, somebody of that status. And so while he was there, you know what? Well, I would like to give something back to the community. So he did a free concert for the high school, and for the junior high school. Mm. And you talking about a big moment in life. And then after that, then I think that was the time for, uh, I think he would just turn 27. And one of the uh, school teachers said, hey, I'm going to invite Steve Wonder over, over to my house for a birthday party. We'd like our band to be the host. Group wow. Just, yeah. Moment, so we had a chance to play to Steve Wonder in 1977. That was when that uh, album came out, Songs in the Key of Life. And get what song we was playing when he uh, start, um, when he came in. It what was song? Love is in Need. Love is in Need of Love Today. Oh, yes. Love yes. In need, love Today. Yeah. But anyway, that's it. that was a big, yes, 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 yes. That was a big moment. And that was a big moment. I mean, that was really, I mean, and then on top of that, Stephen Wonder said he wanted to play. So Stephen played the keyboard that night. Uh -huh. He said, you know what? I want to play the drums. He said, a lot of folks didn't know that Steve wanted to play drums in the studio either. No, so I didn't know like, that you know, he like, could play the drums either. Yeah, it's like superstitions. That's Steve wanted to play that. Like the intro. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. You know, I didn't so, start learning about Stevie Wonder until I went off to college. So I had heard his uh, music, of course, but I took a music appreciation class and I had to do a report. And mm -hmm. my group chose Stevie Wonder. And when I tell you I fell in love with his music, oh <laughs> my goodness. So that is such an honor for the Deep South Band 
my friend Navel Davis hey. has played for Stevie Wonder. Yes, yes. I mean, that was such a big moment. At, at that particular time, we had two female singers in the group, too. And so uh, he had taken liking to one of our female singers. So he was going to send her to a school. Wow. For so, vocal lessons and stuff like that. And so she was pretty much caught up with her boyfriend. So she didn't want, I said, girl, you, you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. I would have took that you know, opportunity. But... <laughs> I wonder if Stevie's still passing out that opportunity today. <laughs> All right, hey. Well, you know, you know, Steve always was gracious anyway. Because when he was yeah. winning all those awards back in the day, he was giving them away. He, because I remember when he had won about seven Grammys that night or something. He said, you know what? I'm not going to uh, accept this Grammy. I'm going to give it to uh, Kimberly this time. Wow. So he was giving them, yes, yes, Let me yes. receive it. Thank you. Thank you. You called my yes. name in the same sentence as <laughs> Grammy. So thank you, Nabel. I appreciate it. Y'all listening? Oh, my. It's coming, it's coming. <laughs> it's coming, yes. it's coming. It is coming. Um, and around um, last year, I know that <clears throat> you received a special phone call um, and it had to do with the Deep South band, right? So this band yeah. has uh, not been together probably for 30 plus years, but you got this special phone call. So let the viewers know what that call was about and how your music is still alive today. Wow. Since you mentioned that, uh, our group had opened up for the, uh, what they call it, the Washington Parish Fair, which everybody call it county. It's here because, you know, Louisiana is the only state that parishes. We had opened up, uh, they had the, uh, you say the fair was going on at that particular time. I think it was almost nighttime. And so we was performing. And the guy that owned the studio, he was the sound man. Mm -hmm. And as a matter of fact, and after we make a long story short, after we got through performing, he was so mesmerized. So he came in the back of this, uh, in the back of the stage and said, hey, you know what? You guys are just, you know, you guys are really good. You know, he was a country singing guy. You know, he said, he said you guys are really good, really good. But you know what? Stand together, he said, and, 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 and like the guy said, oh, he said, that back gun bass player y'all got over there. I said, oh, uh -oh. My goodness. And so everybody thought, <laughs> saying, nay, 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 nay. You know, I want you to call me back then, too. Nay, nay, too. You know, the girls call me nay, nay. Okay, but, nay, know, nay. We get into the other name a little later on, you know. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> One thing about it, even back then, I was always listening to music, and I was always try to play everything verbatim. You know, mm -hmm. for for you know, for the bass player just holding down the groove, and that's what I would do. I wouldn't overplay the song, so I would just play what we needed for the song, and so that's what folks was feeling. But anyway, it's so to make another long story short too. So we recorded because the guy that enjoyed us so well, he owned a, a recording studio, mm -hmm. and so when he said, "Hey, would you guys like to come to uh, my uh, recording studio and record a song?" and so and so not knowing, you know, we were just excited to record. Of course, back then, we didn't get paid any money at all. Mm. It didn't pay a dime. We were just excited that we were going into the studio and recording. I think they did about maybe three or 400 something copies at the time. But then I would tell folks, you just never know. And so what had happened when the band had broken up. And so we, you know, they played our stuff on some of the local radio stations. After the band had broken up after two or three years, I think we broke up about the last of 79, probably even together since 77. Mm -hmm. And so we didn't think anything else of it. So, but of course, you know, we would always have, you know, we would always talk about the good old days. The group was, you know, we had broken up. So 30 years later, as a matter of fact, to be exact, 37 years later, somebody from London, England got a hold to me because, you know, they appreciate our music more over there mm -hmm. than they do here. And so what had happened. And so uh, anyway, he got hold to my son. And so my son said, uh, oh, oh, like he said, yes, we try to reach Nabil Davis. We want to remaster the song that he did back. Uh, oh, yeah, we want to remaster the song that he did back in the day. So my son thought he was talking about he wanted to remaster the song that they did for me about six or seven years ago. He said, no, 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 no. We don't want that song. He did back in 1977. So he got he got with me. He said, "Hey, I would like to. Um, we would like to remaster uh, your song, and we would like to compensate you for it." 
I said, ah, okay. So anyway, we started talking dollars, you know. And I uh, signed the contract. And so he said, well, like every third uh, quarter, you know, you would get this from that. And so in other words, so we went on here and made that happen. And so that album just released uh, wow. a month ago, a month ago. Congratulations on that, Nathaniel. Out. They sold out within 18 hours of that song. So so many folks really love that song. They sold out in 18 hours. And oh, so, my uh, goodness. Yes, yes, so yes. You so had someone reach out to you. Um, you had someone reach out to you all the way from London, England all to record a song that you did 37 plus years ago that you years. never got paid for. Never got paid for. And now, all of a sudden, you signed yes. a contract and you making money from making a money. band that you had years ago. Yes, yes. Now I can buy me plenty of hamburgers now. Yes. Which, which I don't need, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> but that was the really, 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 that was a really big moment, you know, for somebody to reach out and say, so what I had to do, because as a matter of fact, it was me and myself and the drummer was the one that wrote that song. And so, which he had passed. And so, wow. so when the guy that offered, you know, he would give me the residuals or whatever. So I decided to share with his sister, you know, because I could have kept it all for myself. Yeah. So said, Wait a minute. You know, his sister's living. So, uh, you know, she was part of the band as well. And so we decided to share with her. That's a blessing. You have mm -hmm. a good heart. I mean, Navelle, you actually blessed me by being one of the first people that I worked with in the studio. Uh, you know, you helped produce my first uh, project, which by no uh, means on your end, but I mm -hmm. didn't get it out. So if you all want to listen to some of my old tracks that was produced by Navelle, they're still good today. <laughs> I'm going to have to uh, let them hear it. So you let uh, me know. If you all want to hear it, you got to put in the comments, we want to hear it. And I'll try to get it out on SoundCloud or somewhere um, mm -hmm. so they can hear some of the music because it was really good. And it was it was a blessing truly to work with you. So I want to take a few minutes to do something fun and then we'll drop, jump back into the interview. I mm -hmm. have a word association that I want to do with you. So mm -hmm. I will say a word and mm -hmm. when I say the word, you'll give me the first thing that comes to mind for you, okay? So okay. I only have a couple of words. So my first word for you is music. Music, more. More, we need more music. That's more. good. Because, yeah. one, because the reason I said that, anything that I like more than music is more music. Wow. That's good. <laughs> if I like more of anything, it's going to be more music. Yes. There you go. There you go. What about Southern? Southern? Yeah. The Southern? Uh-huh. Me. Country boy. I like that. Yeah. When we think I'm of southern. the South, we need to think of the country boy. <laughs> Nayville. And let's um, see. Your last down word, home hook. huh? I said down home hook. There you go. Down home hook. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. <laughs> Let's see. Your it. last word is going to be bass. Bass? Yes. Guitar. Bass, bass guitar. guitar. There we go. I guess, there. I guess you mean BASS, right? Or are you talking about uh, BASC? BASS. You were right. Okay. You were right from the beginning. Okay. Look, okay. it was the first word that came to mind, and I knew it was going to be somewhere around music for you. So <laughs> I wasn't thinking nothing about touching bass. It was playing the bass. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so let's jump back into your interview, okay? So you mm -hmm. um, ended up leaving Bogalusa, Louisiana, and going to Tacoma, Washington, uh, where you married your beautiful wife of over 40 plus years, Kim, wow. right? Yes, 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 yes. 
So once you moved from Bogalusa to uh, Tacoma, tell me what changed in music. Was there a different sound? Were there new elements that you added? What were some of the things that you saw once you got to Tacoma? Well, down in Louisiana, they played the majority of a lot of stuff, but more of your quartet singing, and which pretty much when I came up here, they didn't have too many quartet groups. You know, I think the choirs became more popular there. And so down in Louisiana, you had more, like I said, of your you know, quartet singers. And so when I moved up here, it was more choirs. And then on top of that, I was introduced to contemporary Christian music. And mm. so down in Louisiana, I never heard of no con contemporary Christian music because you know everything is pretty much segregated down there anyway. Right. And so, on, so, so the only thing I knew was uh, with the gut bucket uh, quartet <laughs> sound. And so when we moved up here, and then I kind of ex expanded my consciousness, if you will. They had different group that came out named, a uh, young man named Patrick Henderson. Uh, he was out of California, uh, West Angeles. I think he was the minister of music of West Angeles, Church of God in Christ. And so I started getting introduced to a lot of the R&B, more feel of the gospel music. Of course, that's when the wine is that, when they came out with, you know, the question is, you know, they're, Hey, and everything took off from then. So yeah. as a matter of fact, I was the bass player for the choir. You know, I, I was known at the particular time, the choir director, no, no, the bass player that directs the choir. And okay. so, but, and so, so you can direct and, the and you play yeah, it at the yeah, same yeah. time. <laughs> I was just getting into the, uh, when BB and CC came along, I was just getting into the sequencing. You know, mm. so that's how, the, yeah, the beat machines and all that kind of stuff. And so that's why I said I get a little tilt now when I see the guy with the uh, with the uh, computer, with the, you know, click tracks. I said, oh, and I, I said, okay, then. Yeah. So we was doing that back in the 80s, you know. So, right. But now, of course, things have evolved. Of course, they another level now. These young folks now, I mean, the musicians now, man, I mean, they make you want to go back to the woodshed. You know, I've got everything really gifted him. <laughs> yes, but you know, there's one thing that I uh, discussed with one of my former guests, Everett Drake, and uh, we want mm. these young people, these young musicians to say thank you, Nabel. Thank yeah. you, you know, to the people that came before, because truly it's because of you all who were doing music that they can get to the level um, that they're at today. You all helped pave that road you know mm -hmm. you've been you've been grinding and going for many of years you know so they definitely need to uh celebrate you and keep your wow. music alive as well you know so that's wow. something that i love now you did mention the winings um and even bb and cc you were one of the first to bring them to tacoma washington um, yes. You also have hosted, you know, events in the park, and you've also performed at many events, you know, so I want you to share with me the importance of music and what impact it has on your community. Oh, definitely. As a matter of fact, when, um, when we first brought BB and CC here, um, that, I mean, that was a really amazing moment because I think they used to be part of the PTL club at the time. Praise the Lord. So, yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> so when we brought them here, um, we had another young lady. They they had the resources, but we had the know-how for us putting on events because that's what we used to do it down in Louisiana as well, too. We used to have rock festivals and all that stuff, you know, with Deep South Band. Mm -hmm. So we pretty much know how to um, coordinate events and stuff like that. So we, when they said they had the money, so they wanted to bring BB and CC up here. I, I, I said, okay. So my wife was really good at that end too, Kim Davis. Yeah. Same thing that you have pretty much like Kimberly. Aww. But anyway, like she's a hey, hey, like she know how to make things happen. So anyway, so we was uh we would sell tickets. As a matter of fact, we would sell more tickets than the ticket outlets. I mean, Kim was just like, well, we didn't, you know, she just was a go getter. Yeah. And so the Lord had blessed us to go ahead on the brain TV and CC. It was uh later. Park Sisters, we brought them. That was back, I think that was in 80, 84, 85. So you said that time. you brought BB and CC, and you brought who else? The Clark Sisters. 
We got the Park Sisters as well. Yes. Yeah. Uh, wow. And then that was another group. That that was another uh, dual singer. I can't I can't even think of their name, but they was a dual singer too. They were the husband and wife team, and they okay. was good. Uh -huh. So we brought the Clark Sisters up here twice. Wow. Uh -huh. Wow. And of course, back then, you know, um, before we bought BB and CC before they got the Grammy, you know, so, you know, they didn't cost as much, but once they yes. got that Grammy behind their name, uh huh. Oh, yeah. Things I mean, went the up a little bit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> went up a little bit, just, you know, just yes. about 20,000, that's all. <laughs> right, right. But, you know, they are one of my favorites. I grew up listening to uh, the Winans, BB and CC, and the Winans themselves, and then you know, my era had the wine in space too. So, you know, I oh, love okay. that family. I really enjoy oh. them. And who doesn't enjoy uh, the Clark sisters? So oh, you had some good people it. that you brought to the Washington era uh, area. But I also want to say that you did some great things there as well. I know when I was in Washington um, that you would host a concert, a free concert, and people... Mm -hmm. Uh, people's Park, where people could come and listen to gospel music. So tell me about that and why it was important for you to get um, the music out into the community. Oh, that's what it was all about. Uh, just giving back to the community, bringing, bringing, it to, to, uh, bringing the communities together through music. As a matter of fact, with a friend of mine named Frederick Peel, again, he had the know-how for us getting the resources. Mm -hmm. I knew the pe people got to have the relationship with them. And so I think we started it, mm, I forgot what the year was, but we had it going on for like 20 years. And Lord had blessed us to go from 100 to almost uh, 5,500 some folks because we had partnership up with, um, with uh, World Vision at the time. Okay. And uh, they were part of it for about three or four years. And I mean, you know, going to uh, giving back to the community, like the back to school, uh, backpacks and stuff. I mean, it was really huge. And so folks, as a matter of fact, folks have gotten saved in the park. That was really about bringing the folks together. Folks, and we wouldn't have altar calls. And uh, as a matter of fact, one of the sisters, she is the number one usher uh, for the state, uh, Church of God in Christ. She was at that particular park and she didn't have no church on. So she came to our church because of the gospel fest and now she yeah. is the number one <laughs> she is the number one usher in the whole state of washington for the church of god in christ wow so you never know you yes never know. Quarantines. and then on top of that of course some of the other local groups that have went on to do things uh uh krista akins you know she was part because i was part of this year singing contest as a matter of fact back we used to always put on a singing contest soundtracks uh -huh. and they would have judges out there to judge first year i came in third the second year i came in second and the third and then the third year i came in first all you know, right they would, yes yes and so they would teach you and the song i came in first with was Jesus is real. <laughs> we That's did John P. King and Paul House. As a matter of fact, Chris Aiken was my background singer at the time. And as a matter of fact, she was the first one that's on my very first project that we did over 25 years ago as well, Down Home Praise. Chris Aiken was part of that. And uh, she was part of my Christmas project. Probably did at least about six or seven body of work, you know, albums. So, Lord, have bless us. So what we do and some of the songs that I have written myself and then we had other writers now come down to writing I thought that was kind of funny my last project that I did my daughter you know she was looking at some of my uh, contents the way that I, you know I was still right old school you know the Lord will make a way out of no way uh -huh. you know you turn my dark you know turn my darkness into day yes. so my daughter looked at the lyrics she said no daddy let me do some writing for you I said what you trying to say girl she said, no, no, I didn't want to help you out. But now, <laughs> what's going on today? You're going to be glad God made a way <laughs> out of no way. Yes. He turned your darkness in today. I but anyway, like she just wanted to help her dad out back in the day, you know, which I appreciate a bit, a bit more. You know, she went to college. She got a master's and all that, so she know how to write. And as a matter of fact, they have their own body and work out as well. I mean, they have taken it to a whole other level. My son, 
Uh, yes, I mean, they really have. Of course, they call me Pops now, you know, Pop D. Pop D. No more of the other name that she was going to bring up. Yes, it's Pop D now. <laughs> if you know what I, I mean. I love it. Yes, <laughs> your kids are truly a chip off the old block. You know, you have Kiana Davis as well as Quentin Davis. As you said, they are, they are gifted. They are talented. Yeah. Um, and I know that even when I was working on my project, you know, Quentin was young at that time, but he would study a lot of the things that you were doing and sit mm -hmm. in on uh, many of your sessions and such. Mm -hmm. And so just look how things have turned around because he is doing great things as well. So um, it's just a blessing. Nabel, yeah. you are one of the nicest uh, guys that I have met, oh, that I have come oh, across. Thank you. Yes. So I want to say thank you, you know, um, in front of my viewers and everyone, thank you. thank you for being one of the first, like I said, the first, let me put it that way, to wow. uh, allow me to go into the studio. I've been blessed to be in the studio many uh, times since then. I worked on my own single a few years back, as well as working mm -hmm. on many other projects uh, for others, doing background uh, vocals and things like that so thank you thank you thank oh, you because of you yeah. you know I knew what to do when I got to the studio so wow. and <laughs> I, I tell you I thank you for letting me practice on you you know because we were still learning um uh, you know when it comes down to recording there's yes. an art to this thing too so we were learning so I appreciate you allowing me to practice on you absolutely anytime <laughs> when, like you gave me something to work with you see that there, yes. there, there are some folks <laughs> yes. because there are some folks that come through, you know, not as talented, you know. So you have to use your expertise for it to be in the producer and bring the best out of it. So right. anything I have to do is just tell you, just go ahead and just do you. And so it, hey, it was beautiful chapter because sometimes I just get a blessing just hearing other folks do what they do. Yeah. You know, so I just want to let you appreciate you and uh and I love your spirit and you just keep on doing what you're doing. Hey, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you for interviewing with me today. Now is your time. That's it? No, we're not, we're not done yet. Almost, oh, okay. but not yet. Okay, okay, I want okay. you to teach me something. And I also want to hear you play and sing a little something. You do a ditty on Facebook um, every week and your audience loves it. So can you take my viewers to church for a little bit? Can you give me a little something? You know what? Well, since you asked me, you know, I'll be back. <laughs> so Kevin, thank you so much for inviting me to be part of your program. That's a song by Timothy Wright that goes something like, Jesus, 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 Jesus. So you see, you want to hear it on down on the Jesus. I love you. Yes, I do. I just made that, but I don't live right on the spot. 
Uh, but anyway, like, but you know what? I have so many. I got over a while. I've been doing a lot of um, recording. I think I got at least about 50 or 60 something tracks. So what I'm getting ready to do now, because I still want to invest in the millennium. So I'm going to try to do something along with them and have wow. them that, you know, let me come in and sing a, a few all the ooh or whatever, you know what I mean? There you go. Yes. Yeah. So as a matter of fact, I would like to send you a track. Oh. And have you the right to it. Yes, yes, Thank yes. You. As a matter of fact, yes, yes, yes. So I you like more that. of a listen. So we'll talk about that, you know, just let me know what type of track that you like, you know. Yes. If, you know, if it's the old soul thing, if it's the whatever. Oh, wow. We're having for you. Yes, yes, yes. I appreciate yes. And that. And that just you came just to me. That just came to me. And I, and, I can see you, and I can see you singing it, too, with that smile on your face. Oh, thank yes, you. Yes, 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 yes. Yes. That just blessed so, me. That blessed me. You, I told you you one of the nicest guys I know. Oh, I told thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. make me feel you. so at ease with this um, interviewing thing. You know, this something. Um, do but like you know everybody has something to say you know after certain after six years i guess i should have something to say yes, <laughs> have a testimony. yeah yes yes so i just thank god for allowing i just allowing you to do what you do just you know expose me just a little bit more because whatever we do you know we try to do it to the glory and honor of god amen and so i appreciate you yes Absolutely. so i wish i can so 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 when we're we gonna do our laughing stuff, you know. Okay. This is my laughing no, 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 buddy, no. everybody. No, but, no, 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 you are really good medicine. A lot of people don't realize laughing is good medicine. Yeah. When I see you, you when you smile and stuff, yeah, yeah. Feel a whole lot better. Really much better. Oh, I know what it was. I was gonna tell you about. The guitar, how I learned, because I tune my guitar differently than anybody else tune. Okay. You know, that, yeah, uh, a lot of people tune what they call, which I didn't know anything about, no C natural. I said C natural, okay. That's your basic tune that everybody tunes in. So okay. I tune my guitar in the key of E. So that's an open key, if you will. You say um, E as in Edward? E. As an apple, yeah, okay. uh, Spanish E. Um, as a matter of fact, a blind man, Pete, had pretty much taught me in the key of E. I uh, always wanted to play. My very first song that I learned how to play was, uh, was um, Stand By Me. Okay, and, okay. Uh, and, and, and my second song was Knock On Wood. And my third song was Mission Impossible. Uh oh. After that, I don't know what I learned after that. After that, <laughs> it was history. <laughs> it was history. Yeah. And so anyway, the blind man peaked like he played in Spanish E. And so like I never came out of that key. So the, uh, another friend of mine, he he tuned his guitar like everybody else. But uh I couldn't, you know, I shouldn't like, just registered. I said, wait a minute, I I don't know how to play in that particular key. So you know, when you tear yourself something like that. So I told my Murph, I told my and stuck there. But anyway, the Lord has blessed us to play in the key of Spanish E. There are very few people play in that key. And as a matter of fact, when I came up here, um, I ran into two other young men that played in Spanish, played in Spanish E. And we said that we were going to get together and have a concert and call ourselves the Spanish E Boys. Wow. You know? Because okay. a lot of people never played in that key. And I mean, there was good, which it never happened. I think a couple of guys that passed off or whatever. But anyway, speaking of Spanish key, that's the key. Oh, I can show you better than I can tell you. Okay. I have my guitar on. Yes, get that guitar. <laughs> yes. As a matter of fact, speaking of Spanish, this 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 is the kind of guitar that uh, Santana played. Uh oh, I know you, know you Santana about to play. You know Santana? Yeah, I know Santana. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh. Something like that. But anyway, can you hear the guitar? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
know my name. You know my name. Remember that one? Oh, yeah. You know my name. It is a you know my name. Like you hear that little Wayne thing there? That was a lot yeah. of quartet singers do. Nice. Like they call that ear candy. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> but anyway, Spanish E is something like um, a lot of the Spanish folks play in that key. So what you call open E like this here. See, I'm playing. And so to make it sound like Spanish, you go like this here. I know that sound. You know that? So that's that Spanish. Mean, that means it's about to go down in the uh, in, in Spain. <laughs> See that? <laughs> so that means like, you know. But then on top of that, if you want to put a beat to it, you can go. Hey. Yeah. I wish I would have had the drum machine set up for you. But anyway, um, that's what they do in Spanish. That's why all the Spanish guys play in this open E. They call it open E. Open E. And so open E, yeah. It causes already an instant, I already call it an instant chord. Yeah. You know, so Spanish E. So I never there came out go. of it. And so and so some of the guys you said. Man, how can you play those play those particular chords like that? I say, well, man, I, I can't play the way that you play because my guitar is tuned differently. As a matter of fact, um, Curtis Mayfield, uh -huh. he played in a different, he tuned his guitar different. Like it wasn't Spanish E, but like it was another tune. I forgot what he had called it, but he said he had wished he would have passed it on to some other folks before he had passed. They would come close to it. Yeah, but they couldn't play it the way that he played it because he tuned his guitar differently. So now let me tell right you, there. I didn't even know Curtis Mayfield played the guitar. I know he yeah. had music, yeah. but you know, a singer, but I didn't know he. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, Curtis Mayfield used to uh, yeah, he used to do something like you say, "It's all right, it's all right, it's all right," said, "It's all right." It's all right to have a good time. It's all right. Oh, it's all right. You know, I'm thinking when you're all right, though. Uh, 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 the how they used to do back then. Yeah. They didn't play many notes. They, they let the other thing, so they would let the song breathe. It's all right. That's all they did through the whole song. That's it. But the other instruments took it over and made it do what it do, you know. Right. And so now, folks, now they try to kill the song, but it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. To be in the view of Kim. It's all right. Oh, it's all right. Yeah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> I have my own little ear candy that I put on the stuff that I do. So I always call it salsa, whatever. It's some gravy, it's some salsa, some Louisiana salsa, whatever. There you, you go. Know. Yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. Play a little bit more for me on that guitar. Just play some for us. Uh, let me see some. Uh, like, uh, like, let me, can you hear this song here? Okay. <laughs> this is. The daily, weekly hook. Let's go. The joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world can't take it away. The joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. Sound your help me sing it. Say it. 
Weekly hook, uh, yes. weekly um, download. As a That's matter of fact, great. I think it was about 58 seconds, and everybody wanted more, more than more. But uh -huh. man, that was too short. That was too short. So of course we yes. extended a little bit. So it grew from there. And so I just wanted the folks to know the joy that I have. The world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. And so this is gonna be my next project that I'm working on now with some of your new millennials. Yes. And so you can be part of this. I would love yeah. to. I, would love I can you. hear you. Instead of beat making go like that. That's right. <laughs> Say what? Hey, Bill, you have truly been a joy today. And like the Thank song you. said, this joy that you have, the world didn't give it and the world cannot take it away. I want to thank all of you for watching today. I want to thank my guest, my friend. Mr. Yeah. Nadell Davis. Yes, Thank I have you. learned so much from you today. Um, I have enjoyed um, talking with you, learning about Louisiana, learning about Deep South Bend, hearing about mm. Stevie Wonder. You have some history. I am so grateful to have you. Do you have any last Thank words you. for our listeners? Uh, I just like to let the listeners know, hey, Whatever you do, do it as unto the Lord, because he will reward you at the end. Amen. Yes, he yes. will. Yes, he will. For those of you that want to follow uh, Nabel Davis, you can find him on Facebook. And where can they find your music? Because it's out there. Oh, well, as a matter of fact, it's on iTunes. Just go to iTunes. Of course, it's on YouTube as well. So yes. let's go to iTunes. Yes, yes, iTunes and uh, YouTube. So all right, um, you know, iTunes, all, all media platform. As a matter of fact, once you put it on iTunes, the fit that must go on all of your media outlets like Spotify and all the, the other ones. Um, there's another one they call. I can't even think of it right now, but all of the media outlets were carried. Okay. So you yeah. heard him. It's on all the digital media outlets. You can also find him on YouTube. But I want you to support Nabel Davis. He has beautiful gospel music out there. Um, and you don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. He's going to have you clapping your hands, tapping your toes. You're going to be listening to that special guitar in Spanish E. We learned some things from you I today, like Nabel. <laughs> You have a weekly hook, but it may become daily because the folks be thirsty for your hooks. <laughs> they be wanting more. I'm telling you, you have a sound that we definitely uh, need nowadays. So I am, I'm glad to have you. I'm glad that your gift is making room for you and has made room for you. And it ain't over. You pouring mm. into the next generation to come. So we look Thank forward you. to hearing more from you, Nabel. If you or anyone that you know would like to be on Talented Television, please send me an email at talentedtelevision at gmail.com. We are looking forward to hearing from you and hearing your story. 
what do you have to say to the world? So until next time, thank you for watching. Remember, subscribe, like, comment, share with a friend, and we will see you next time. Bye. Wow, it's just not eight o'clock. We got another hour. <laughs> okay, let's go.